And the king spake unto Ashpenaz that he should bring certain of the children of Israel and of the king's seed, children in whom was no blemish, but well favored, and skillful in all wisdom and understanding science, and whom they might teach the learning and the tongue of the Chaldeans. He is Daniel, a Hebrew, whom the king has named Belteshazzar. The feast is prepared. And the king appointed them a daily provision of the king's meat and of the wine which he drank so nourishing them three years that at the end thereof they might stand before the king. Hail and highest honor to King Nebuchadnezzar. Hail Nebuchadnezzar. From this time forth shall the king's own meat and wine be the wisest of the wise, the future of Babylon. Come, eat. And among them were the children of Judah, whom he had given the names Belteshazzar, Shadrach, Meshach, and Abednego. Belteshazzar. Master. Eat, drink, honor the great King Nebuchadnezzar, the protector of the crown and the provider of your feast. I hail Nebuchadnezzar and honor his many names, noble Ashpenaz. But I cannot drink of his wine, neither can these, my brethren. Surely any ailment that hath befallen thee so quickly can be cured by the kingdom's purest of wines. I have taken an oath upon me a covenant of my forefathers. I cannot partake of such meats or wine. Nor can I, nor I, Lord. The house of Judah is no more. There is no covenant. Only the power of Nimrod and the glory of Bel. Speak with reason, Belteshazzar. For I fear my lord the king, who hath appointed your meat and your drink. Why should he see your faces in worse liking than the other children? Shall you make me endanger my head to the king? Master, prove thy servants, I beseech thee, ten days. And let us eat grains instead of meat water in place of wine. Let our countenances be looked upon, and the countenance of the children who eat the portion of the king's meat. And as thou seest, deal with thy servants. Do as he says for 10 days.
And at the end of ten days, their countenances appeared fairer than all the children which did eat the portion of the king's meat. And God gave these four children knowledge and skill in all learning and wisdom. And Daniel had understanding in all visions and dreams. I've dreamed a dream. My spirit is troubled to know the dream. O king, live forever. Tell thy servants the dream. And we will show the interpretation. Thing is gone from me! You will not make known unto me the dream with the interpretation thereof. You shall all be cut in pieces and your houses shall be made a dunghill. But if you show me the dream and the interpretation thereof, you shall receive of me gifts and rewards. Great. I know, O oh King, of many waking dreams and fleeting imagery. But only if thou, O oh noble King, wilt tell us the dream, can thy faithful servants show the interpretation of it. All of you have prepared Lying and corrupt words to speak before me, so that you can gain the time till the thing is gone from me. Tell me the dream! There is not a man alive that can show thy matter. There is no king, lord, or ruler that asks such things of any magician or astrologer or Chaldean. It is a rare thing the king requires, for there is none other that can show the king his dream except the gods. Out! Out! Kill them. Kill them all! Ariok, what is this decree? What fate awaits the wise of Babylon? Death. Why is the decree so hasty from the king? After all these wars, your life for a dream. A dream which the king will not reveal. A dream? Ariok, wait! This need not be. Bring me before the king. I can know the dream. Neil.
speak. O oh, king, if thou wilt give me time, I will show thee the dream and the interpretation thereof. My lord, what harm could be done? One day. God's, your God, be with you. Altaceous are wisest among the young. Art thou able to make known unto me the dream which I have seen, and the interpretation thereof? There is a God in heaven that revealeth secrets, and maketh known unto the king Nebuchadnezzar what shall be in the latter days. Thy dream, and the visions of thy head upon thy bed, are these. Thou, O King, sawest and behold a great image. This image, whose brightness is excellent, stood before thee, and the form thereof was terrible. The head was of fine gold, the breasts and arms of silver, the belly and thighs of brass. Its legs were of iron, its feet were partly of iron and partly of molded clay. Looking until a stone was cut out, not by hand, and it struck the image on its feet of iron and of molded clay and crushed them, were altogether crushed, and became like the chaff from the summer threshing floor. And the wind carried them away so that no trace at all was found of them. It became a large mountain and filled the whole. 